over 1.6 million subscribers. And joining me now, favorite name, Jesse. Hey, we have the same name. All right, so why do you like the idea of being home, not working, but still getting paid by corporate America? That's incorrect, Jesse. We want to do away with corporate America entirely in favor of a worker-owned economy that does not punish people for being unwilling or unable to work an absurdly inefficient 40 or 50 or 60 hour work week purely to make ends meet. You're not being forced to work. This isn't, this isn't slave labor. You, you've, you've applied for a job. You've agreed to the terms and conditions of the employment. And you know, you can walk away from that job at any time and quit. So no, no, Jesse, you don't understand. And as someone with a bank account the size that yours is, you wouldn't. We are being forced to work. If we do not work these 40, 50, 60 hour weeks of sheerly useless labor for the sake of somebody else's paybook, we die. We become homeless. We starve. I think this might not be the greatest. No, no, idea hang on. I'm not done speaking. You asked me a question. You're interviewing me and I have an answer to give you. In the United States, we go without health care. We die. This movement, this anti-work movement is against that concept of unemployment being punishable by death sounds like maybe people are just being lazy. Laziness is not a real scientific concept. There are studies out there that I've come to this interview prepared with because I knew I was going into an interview in which I would be immediately accused of being lazy. Devon Price, a social psychologist, has a whole text titled exactly that. Laziness does not exist. What we call laziness is a warning sign from our bodies and our minds that something is not working. So, if you come across someone on the street, or at your workplace, or anywhere in your environment, and you view them as lazy, you need to realize that what you're viewing is an individual who is physiologically or neurologically unable to cope with their present expectations for one reason or another. Capitalism demonizes these people, and we at Anti-Work are instead trying to support them. How many hours is, is you know, a solid work day in, in your ideal? The concept of a work day is a new phenomenon. Before the advent of wage slavery, you worked until you'd done enough. We're working more today in terms of hours than we have since the Industrial Revolution, and, and far more than we ever did under feudalism as peasants or as serfs. So how many hours should we work is kind of a red herring. We should work however much is needed by society, which is an awful lot less than what we work now. What I do you do? I am a social worker. I help people who have been so let down by capitalist society, people who are impoverished, people who are neurodiverse, with my two degrees for barely more than minimum wage because I believe in doing good in the world. I would never come into an interview that's literally about work and expect to present myself well if I didn't have what most would consider a respectable job and greater prospects. That is to say, really, if I'm being truthful, I wouldn't do this interview at all because I don't talk to fascist news outlets.